Hello, my name is Dante Rene, and welcome to the Ten Room Bizarro YouTube page, where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Like tonight's film, 1981's Suddenly in the Dark. This is 1981 Suddenly in the Dark, put out by Mondo Macabro, and uh, originally this was released as a limited edition, um, and it sold out very, very quickly for them, and then I had to wait for this edition to be released on their website and Amazon and, and other sites. This is 1981 Suddenly in the Dark, a Korean film that is supposedly very rare and um, pretty unknown. And uh, this is a Blu-ray, absolutely, unbelievably beautiful. Um, let's look at some of the uh, the shots here. So let's get into this 1981 obs uh, Korean obscurity, suddenly in the dark, amazing artwork right there. Um, this is a film that is very unique. Um, it might have elements of what you might have seen and vibe in other films, but all together in the whole of this film, of this hundred minute film, is something unlike anything I've really seen before. This is a film detailing paranoia and jealousy and fear of getting older and fear of losing beauty and competition and work and preoccupation and sleeplessness and anxiety and hallucinations spirits the supernatural and a doll and murder this is suddenly in the dark it's all of that and it's also erotic in that world. Suddenly in the Dark's music is so interesting because 1981, I don't typically associate the kind of music that I heard in this film with an Asian film and even a Korean film. I have not seen many Korean films. I've mostly seen Japanese films. Um, but we have a very pulsating uh, electronica synth score, an 80s dark synth score that you would hear in an 80s horror film. This is so well done, so interesting. Um, and, and it's really fascinating when it mixes with the scenery, with the story, with what's happening on screen. That's where that concoction together with the synth music is really something special. We also have moments of orchestrated music, just a few moments, but moments of orchestrated music that are very, very jarring in light of the fact that the majority of the score is synth. As well, we also are using synth cues, bizarre, abrasive, weird cues, like all of a sudden something happens on the screen and you'll see, D -d 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 you'll hear that sound like, like these weird sounds um, that are dark and mysterious and just overall bizarre. And it's really that sound design with the music and with the sound effects, the cues. When you take that and you mix it with the story and the direction and the scenery, the visuals, that's what makes Suddenly in the Dark exactly what it is. Um, you've heard before that the sound is a character the the sound in here is I, I i wouldn't even say it's a character necessarily that's it might be too easy i would say that the sound and the music in here is actually defining the imagery in many regards in a in a new and an exciting way. Now, when we take that imagery and we look at the style of this film, the cinematography, the direction, this film is so stylistic. We have these, these very beautiful kind of um, dolly shots or, or side scrolling. Then we have shots from the top of the ceiling down. And then we have shots from um, different angles and different pieces of architecture in the room or a snake, a double snake eating an animal sculpture. Um, 
the way the, 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 the scenes are framed in between things, like the two snakes, the two uh, taxidermy snakes in a room, um, the architecture of the room, the chairs, the tables, um, the floor, the bathroom, the bathtub, the bed. I mean, it's all... Everything is, 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 is the way that it's done. There's also reverse zooms and forward zooms. Um, we're also working with very jumpy camera work with also very beautifully slow camera work. At times it almost reminded me of a psychedelic, um, bizarre Stanley Kubrick in, in, in the style at times. Um, the, the the camera is 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 very subtle and very beautiful and very scrolling and very um very lush and then it's also very, um can be very fast very quick and also very bizarre and it can be lush in its bizarreness also and um especially as the climax and near the end of the film happens. Now the camera also has beautifully sexual shots in this film, beautifully erotic shots in this film of wet skin and girls' feet and girls' legs, very leggy film, um, and, and um, you know, just beautiful legs at that, beautiful feet. And the way that the camera picks it up, even the way the camera will pick up uh, kind of under, you know, the, the, the panties or, or under the skirts and at the panties, underwear shots. And it's all done in this concoction of horror, the supernatural, the psychedelic. And I want to mention to you stylistically that there are kaleidoscope-like shots in this film. There's surreal shots in this film. This is a surreal film, as well as it being a horror film and an erotic film and a film that is psychological also. There are wild kaleidoscope-like shots in this film. And in that kaleidoscope imagery, you can have things that are happening or not happening. Um, that you think are happening that might not actually be happening. You can also have blood and terror and nightmares all within this psychedelic kaleidoscope filming that you will see near the beginning of the film. There's an interesting theme of butterflies in this film as well, especially as the film starts off and as you are left wondering what exactly is happening near the beginning of the film. And then all of a sudden it erupts into a frenzy of um, of wild kaleidoscope nightmares. I mean, you could almost say this film is like a kaleidoscope nightmare. I've never quite seen that utilized in a film throughout the film in the way that it was done. You could almost look at the theme of what we see, our eyes, um, of what we hear. There's almost, there's a shot in this film that really reminded me of, um, of, uh, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. There's one shot, and, and, and when you see the film, I mean, really reminded me of it. There's some very interesting uses of dolls in this film, and the horror of a doll, the horror of what you think is real and what is not real, possibly. Also, the horror of the supernatural and possibly um, religious culture of Korea in this particular film. Um, this is a film that incorporates the horror of the female mind, the horror of femininity, the horror of as I said, jealousy and lust and youth versus old women. And we also have elements of the peculiar, the bizarre, as I've mentioned before. And looking at characters' faces and wondering if, is this true? Is this actually real? 
Look at their faces. The husband in this film is such an interesting, great character. The way he answers questions. It's like as if you could never blackmail him because he is just being completely honest. He has nothing to hide. It's just a matter of fact. It's life. And it is within this film that we are encountering the mind. But it's not that simple. Well, the mind's never simple. But we're also encountering the mind's eye versus the supernatural. Versus the sexuality of youth and of, of mystery. This is Suddenly in the Dark, 1981. Uh, the girl, the the girl playing the young girl in this film is um, very sexually attractive. Her body, um, the acting in this film is awesome. It's amazing. Very interesting uh, part of this film is that we have um, predominantly a film that takes place in one location amongst only a few characters. And um, you're isolated, but you never really quite feel isolated. When we When we leave the house, there's this one image of one of the characters walking on this road and it looks like there's heat kind of coming off of the road but it's way overboard where the whole film is shaking uh, we have a lot of imagery of what has already happened and how it could possibly be interpreted or uh, uh, by a character in the present okay you could call them flashbacks but they're really it's something that's already happened that you've already seen that you've already heard and now you yourself in your mind the character's mind is now interpreting that um in a way that links to what they believe in the present and that is something that this film also uh, works with this is suddenly in the dark 1981 yes we have some blood we have some death um, but it's not quite that simple because at the end of this film and in the climaxes of this film what you feel might not happen or couldn't happen Actually, the film might go there. It might actually go there. This film is bizarrely, darkly, weirdly, simplistic, and beautifully simplistic. 1981, Suddenly in the Dark, put out by Mondo Macabro. You can get it right now. I did. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching the 10 Room Bizarre YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more like Suddenly in the Dark from 1981. Thank you so much and have a great night.